Welcome back to the Lois Banks Show. I'm your host, Lois Banks. And um, today we have a special guest in the uh, studio audience. Her name is Lisa Smith, and she is a plant-based nutritionist. Lisa, thank you for coming to the Lois Banks Show. Thank you so much for having me, Lois. Wonderful. You know, um, at the top of the hour, I always like to uh, share, you know, blessings and what God is doing in, in my ministry. And then right after that, we're going to go right into the interview with Miss Lisa uh, Smith. Um, many of you might not know, but I have a uh, health product that's going to be on the market soon. God blessed me with that um, idea, and I'm very excited about it. And then after I obey God in that area, God sent me a scientist who's going to be taking my health product and doing uh, clinical trials and then turning it into uh, a medicine without side effects. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that because nice. it's going to be plant-based. It's going to be based on um, the natural properties that God has brought into the earth. So I'm very excited about what God is doing. Um, the uh, $16 million grant for the clinical trial has already been um, approved. And, uh, you know, I'm just walking with God in this area yes. of natural health and eating right and just, you know, trying to be a blessing to the world. Mm -hmm. So today's topic is going to be based on uh, nutrition, um, eating healthy, plant-based, yes. clean foods grown without chemicals yes. and um, understanding the reasons why you need to take those uh, dis or make those decisions to make a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Lisa, I want yes. you to open up uh, to the viewing audience and um, talk a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and your education mm -hmm. and your background. Okay, sure. So again, my name is Lisa A. Smith. I work as a certified plant-based nutritionist, professional speaker, and I'm a owner of two health and wellness companies, the Professionally Fit and the Black Health Academy. I'm also the executive director of the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, which is a nonprofit organization centered around using whole foods, plant-based, no oil uh, nutrition to heal and reverse chronic disease. And so full time, I work toward helping individuals manage health, things like obesity, hypertension, high cholesterol, autoimmune disease, and teaching them how to use food as medicine. Um, educationally, I have a bachelor's in psychology. I have an MBA, a master's in business administration. I'm also certified in plant-based nutrition through eCornell, um, and I self-study a lot. Right. So um, and I'm also the author of the plant based foodie, which is a whole foods plant based recipe book. And I'm also the creator of Farm to Table, which is a digital and live course that I teach that helps individuals make the transition to a plant based diet. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Now, um, everybody knows that I'm a licensed nurse and I've seen throughout the years people uh, reverse a lot of diseases in their body when they ate plant based. Yes. Can you give some examples of some people that, you know, uh, that changed a maybe a serious diagnosis into uh, a healing testimony oh absolutely there are countless examples of individuals who have used nutrition uh, to reverse chronic diseases that we're often told we will die from or that we will need to be on lifelong medications from uh, one in particular is my good friend Paul Chatlin who is the founder of the plant-based nutrition support group um, before this year, a couple months ago, he asked me to step up and take over. However, he completely reversed heart disease using whole foods, plant-based nutrition. Um, and we know that heart disease is the number one killer in this country. It takes over 600,000 people each year. Um, I also have plenty of clients and individuals who have been through my courses and worked with me with one-on-one -on -one coaching to reverse things like high blood pressure high cholesterol, obesity, um, autoimmune diseases. We reduce flare-ups. We get off of medications. Uh, Tiffany is one of the coaches that works for me and one of my good friends, and she completely manages her RA, rheumatoid arthritis, using a whole foods plant-based diet. I've also seen things like anxiety, depression, uh, lupus, uh, all type of... In conditions. And some things don't have necessarily a diagnosis. It can be something as simple as chronic fatigue syndrome. It could be something as simple as chronic aches and pains. It can be something as simple as inflammation in the body. Uh, all of those things can be mitigated or eliminated just through diet alone, regardless of our genes, mm -hmm. regardless of our past habits for the last 30, 40, 50 years. There is so much power in plants. And, I, and, I, and my hope is to spread that message as far and as wide as possible to get people to understand 
understand the power they have within their own authority. Now, can you explain why maybe some people won't don't make that decision to make a lifestyle change what type of challenges are people dealing with that would maybe prevent them from going or eating plant-based that's a loaded question Lois. Uh, <laughs> you said this was a 30 minute show yes uh, but when you say what type of challenges may prevent someone from being successful where there's so many ways that i could potentially tackle that question. Mm -hmm. um, one, the first two are normative and nihilistic. So normative means, you know, an individual thinks, well, this is the way it's always been. This is the way it will always be. This is just what we do. Mm -hmm. For Thanksgiving, we need to have turkey dressing, macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. and a load of sugar. Mm -hmm. um, at Easter, we need to have a ham on a table. We celebrate birthdays with alcohol and cupcakes and pizza, right? Normative behavior, thinking like, this is the way I was raised. This is the way I brought up. This is the way we do things. Okay. Um, and then you have more of a nihilistic attitude for some people uh, where it's, um, well, you're going to die of something, mm -hmm. meaning what does it matter if I try and change the mm -hmm. way I eat or the way I move or mm -hmm. if I try and introduce meditative or mind mindfulness practices, I could go out and get hit by a bus. So what does it even matter, right? So okay. there's individuals who think that way. Mm -hmm. There's also a belief system in our culture that if it's in our lineage, if it runs in our family, it's mm -hmm. our genes that determines our mm -hmm. outcome as opposed to our individual behaviors. Okay. And so sometimes we have individuals who have been told by physicians that everyone in your family had high blood pressure, everybody in your family had high cholesterol or obesity um, or, or heart disease. And so that essentially is going to be your fate. Mm -hmm. um, I was just at a event recently where someone was telling a story about a doctor. No, actually one of my students recently told a story in my class about a doctor telling her the only way you're going to get off of this blood pressure medication is by changing your family which mm. we know essentially is right. not possible, it's right? Ridiculous. right? It's ridiculous. So he was basically saying you're on blood pressure medication for the rest of your life because mm -hmm. it's in your genes, right? right? Which is a hundred percent untrue. Exactly. So there's, and then there's also, um, we know the food is scientifically formulated to be addictive. So there's the physiological adaptation to these toxins and mm -hmm. these poisons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so there, some of us can't release that addiction, especially if we're holding on to it as a therapeutic practice. Okay. So if we have unresolved traumas, if we have mm -hmm. unresolved grief, forgiveness, whatever emotion we're trying to bury using mm -hmm. our plate, mm -hmm. if we don't resolve that deep seated issue, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can teach you about plants. Okay. Right. So yes. how are we using the food? Are we using the food as a therapeutic tool mm -hmm. or are we using it for sustenance and to nourish our bodies and brains? So there's a multitude of reasons as to why. Mm -hmm. And then also we can even get into the economical argument mm -hmm. about accessibility mm -hmm. and food deserts mm -hmm. um, and how people of color are more than likely to be exposed to more toxins just because our neighborhoods are usually in more industrialized environments where mm -hmm. they're they're more uh, they're along chem trails in mm -hmm. the south where they're spraying chems and we live right in the backyard right. uh, we talk about the advertisement of unhealthy foods in our community is 40 percent times higher than any other yes. and so then there's a whole economic argument about mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. this change can be difficult for people so it's multifaceted okay. okay thank you that was beautiful I love how you <laughs> how you responded because you thank hit you. every you hit yeah. quite a few uh, topics thank so you. I like that <laughs> so I know that you've been eating uh, plant-based foods for like five years yes can you talk about the changes that you've experienced yeah. and the positive changes that oh, you've yes. experienced oh my god like being plant-based is so amazing I absolutely love it because I feel the best I've ever felt mm -hmm. the, and the older I get mm -hmm. um, so for me I used to be 65 pounds heavier than what I am now, but when I went plant-based, uh, I had already lost my weight. Okay. So my, my story is not a weight loss story. Mm -hmm. When I went plant-based vegan, I only lost five extra pounds. Mm -hmm. However, the biggest by far benefit that I gained from adopting a whole foods plant-based diet was my cognitive functioning. Okay. Uh, I have phenomenal recall. I have mm -hmm. the ability to rapidly problem solve. I can mm -hmm. rapidly analyze information. I mm -hmm. can uh, clear thinking, no mm -hmm. brain fog, right? Okay. I run two and a half companies. So it's essential that I am always operating at a high level cognitively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, where I saw this show up the most is on the stage. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional speaker, so I'm constantly being booked to speak somewhere. 
Okay. And 90% of the time, it's going to be about nutrition mm -hmm. and chronic di di disease. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be able to quickly recall mm -hmm. information, stats, you know, mm -hmm. stories, statistics, yes. data yes. to help save somebody in the audience, yes. right? And yes. so if I consume processed food, if I mm -hmm. consume foods that kind of create excess mucus in my body or mm -hmm. a bunch of refined sugar, mm -hmm. I can't access those depths of my brain. Mm -hmm. Up until this year in my company, I didn't have a physical product until mm -hmm. I released a plant-based foodie. So okay. what I sell isn't here. Okay. So I'll be doing a disservice to myself and my audience mm -hmm. if I'm not constantly operating at a mm -hmm. high level. Okay. So for me, the biggest result by far was mm -hmm. cognitive functioning. Well, um, I've noticed um, the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm faced with... Um, Maybe a challenge. My brain comes up with the answer very quick. Yes. Um, my sleep is very sound. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of energy, and I'm yes. ripping and running yes. all across yes. the nation. <laughs> yes. And um, working. Just finished up a movie. Working on a health product. Yes. Work as a nurse administrator for a huge um, insurance company uh, Monday through Friday. And I'm just, you know, I just know it's a lot of energy. Absolutely. And that, and you know what, it almost becomes your downfall. I was just talking to my therapist today about, I have to be still. Okay. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I have all the energy. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to cognitively process all yes. these tasks and projects that I have going on. Yes. But sometimes you have to intentionally stop too. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I call it a champagne problem. Well, you know what? Um, once a week, usually on Saturdays, and I've been doing this for like 20 years, I don't eat anything. Oh, fast. Yeah. I drink a lot of distilled water yes. and drink herbal herbs, yes. natural herbs yes um and i sit still yes i've been doing that for 20 years oh i honor you teach me wise one because <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of health yes it truly being is being still absolutely but you know what i'm going to a mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. event tonight mm -hmm. uh dance meditation mm -hmm. and, and it, it there's a nap built into the entire event wow. so it's like dance meditation followed by mm -hmm. lullaby and a nap oh wow so okay. it's sad that i have to pay for a nap but i'm right. doing it it's happening <laughs> it's happening um, right. but yeah so i try and do mindful practices mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. that i actually invest in mm -hmm. to get that mindfulness and that stillness that's good that's yeah good. now you know thanksgiving is around the corner yes it is so um can you speak to our, our audience and talk about making healthier choices around uh the holidays yes. you know thanksgiving is coming up christmas is coming up because like you said there are different reasons why people make decisions um not to eat healthier yeah. but we want to encourage them um not to get sick. Yeah. You want to encourage them not to Absolutely. go to the hospital. Absolutely. 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 So uh, my vegan Thanksgiving often looks like the sides that we typically enjoy mm -hmm. in the, you mm -hmm. know, in, the, in a black family mm -hmm. where, you, you know, you have your greens, your sweet potatoes, your macaroni and cheese, your mm -hmm. dressing, mm -hmm. um, maybe another vegetable mm -hmm. or you might have mashed potatoes, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but because I'm so steadfast in my core values, mm -hmm. my family knows mm -hmm. that I don't consume any animal products, right. no meat, no dairy. Right? Right, right. And so my sides, because I'm not the big cook, I'm not the one. Right. Mm -hmm. And so okay. it's going to be my mom or my uncle, my family. And so my sides are going to be prepared without the animal products. So okay. my mom actually makes me a separate side of dressing okay. that isn't made with like the turkey drippings, drippings or yes. chicken broth. She uses vegetable broth, none mm -hmm. of that. Okay. Um, my macaroni and cheese, I'm probably going to make and my cheese is going to be mm -hmm. made from cashews, mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. non-dairy milk, okay. non-dairy butter. Mm -hmm. um, my greens are going to be made just with seasonings mm -hmm. and garlic and onions, no meat in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my cornbread is going to be made with a flax egg instead mm -hmm. of a chicken egg right, and right. the vegan vegan butter mm -hmm. and so by no means do I consider this a healthy meal even though it's vegan mm -hmm. for me it's vegan junk food mm -hmm. um, I, I'm doing a, me and a couple of friends my closest friends are also plant based vegan and so we're going to do a friends giving mm -hmm. this year and okay. we're all going to bring you know it's going to be a vegan Thanksgiving mm -hmm. we're all going to bring different dishes so one of mm -hmm. my friends is going to bring like a tofurkey mm -hmm. and so um, it's really easy to eat traditional Thanksgiving food in a vegan way Okay. Um, because you can easily make everything we enjoy mm -hmm. without the animal products one of the things I often suggest too though if you're not a big cook but you want to expose your family to some of these vegan products is um, have some of it catered like for example last year I reached mm -hmm. out to my good friend 
Chef B uh, from Sisters on a Roll, mm -hmm. and she makes these phenomenal greens with smoked mushrooms in them. Mm, and okay. I picked that up to take with to my family. Okay. Um, just this past Tuesday, I graduated 15 students from my farm to table course, mm -hmm. and I had it catered from Leah from mm -hmm. Lit Vegan Kitchen here mm -hmm. in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And she made a mushroom stuffing. Mm -hmm. She made a macaroni and cheese, and she made mm -hmm. a lentil loaf. Okay. Right. And so, um, and then I know uh, Q of the kitchen, the, the kitchen at Q, mm -hmm. she makes a lot of macaroni and cheeses mm -hmm. and things that we can be considered traditional mm -hmm. so whether it be catering mm -hmm. or finding a recipe okay. it's actually quite easy right, if right. you're dedicated to right. not consuming those animal right, products right. that sounds good everything sounds good but i do want to caution people who've been diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. not to eat the mushrooms because they're fungus mm -hmm. and, and cancer is actually a fungus i just had a young woman who was diagnosed with terminal colon cancer mm -hmm. come to me mm -hmm. showed her what to eat told her what foods not to eat mm -hmm. and um, within four weeks the tumor is completely dissolved mm. one of the things I told her was not to eat the mushrooms okay. because a lot of people don't know yeah. that fungus that, that cancer is a fungus mm. and you know mushrooms come from like a, a fungus family yeah so, mushrooms are a fungus yeah. I never heard that cancer yes. was a fungus yes ma'am right. it is, mm. yes, ma it is. Yeah, so okay. I just wanted to put that out there mm. to the, the audience as well but I love what you just said yeah. thank you so much for yeah, that yeah of course yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we now, every, can you give us like an example of what you eat every day? Oh, just so yeah. that we can like see br what, how you eat. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, well, this morning, my first meal of the day, because there's no such thing as a breakfast food, so I don't believe in things like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those don't exist. Okay. Um, but today, my first meal of the day was a salad. The base of the salad was a rainbow shard, Swiss shard, and mm -hmm. spinach. Mm -hmm. um, and in the salad, it was really loaded up. So I had um, golden beets. Mm -hmm. I had pomegranate seeds. Okay. I had avocado. I had mm -hmm. sli sliver almonds. Mm -hmm. uh, I had Kalamata olives, mm -hmm. fresh olives, nothing out of a can. Okay. Um, I also had Kumara tomatoes, brown tomatoes, mm -hmm. organic. Okay. Um, and then I also had, uh, did I have walnuts in there? No walnuts today. Okay. Um, I said the pomegranate seeds and, oh, uh, pepitas, mm -hmm. so sunflower seeds as okay. well. Okay. Um, and that was my salad for today. Very, mm -hmm. very colorful. And mm -hmm. that was my first meal of the day. Okay. What, uh, what time? Uh, well, it was different every day because mm -hmm. I do do intermittent fasting. Okay. Um, that one today was after my workout, so mm -hmm. it was maybe about 9 a.m. Okay, okay. roughly. But sometimes okay. my first meal might not be to 1 p.m. So okay. uh, I don't subscribe to certain times that you should eat or stop right. eating. I, okay. don't, I don't believe in that either. Okay. Um, and then my second meal today was some chili. I made a mm -hmm. pot of chili yesterday. Okay. Uh, a black bean chili out of my recipe book. Mm -hmm. And so I had my a bowl of black bean chili mm -hmm. with um, some fresh cilantro on top. And that okay. was my second meal of the day. Okay. Uh, I had some skinny pop today. I had a pear and kiwi. Mm -hmm. And then um, right before I came here, I was a little hungry. So mm -hmm. I had a banana mm -hmm. that I sliced up with almond butter drizzled on it. Okay. Um, and fresh uh, uh, pecans okay on top so it was okay. a snack as well mm -hmm. um, and so later I'll probably have another bowl of chili or something so but because there's no such thing as a breakfast food I eat right. whatever I want exactly. for my first meal of the day exactly yeah because when you have to give up animal products people mm -hmm. think like what are you going to eat for breakfast right. because the standard American breakfast is loaded with processed meat and right. dairy exactly. uh, and refined sugar so but there's no such thing as a breakfast food so okay and then also too can you talk a little bit about the importance of eating foods that have not been sprayed with chemicals mm -hmm. and then the uh, health challenges that are associated with eating sugar. Oh, oh, sugar. Again, how much time did you have, Lord? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll try and minimize this as much as possible. Right. Um, but yeah, you want to, so the thing as far as organic, when you say not eating things that have been sprayed with chemicals, mm -hmm. When you get something that's organic, it's not that it's 100% chemical free. It's just below a certain standard that has been set, mm -hmm. you know, by the USDA and the FDA. Uh, but the things that I suggest buying organic are things that you consume the skin on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be your tomatoes, your potatoes, your berries, things that have really thin skin that we consume. Uh, the things that I don't necessarily deem to be have to be organic will be things with really thick skin that we don't consume, like mm -hmm. a banana, mm -hmm. a watermelon, mm -hmm. an avocado. Mm -hmm. those things I don't necessarily buy organic okay. but definitely the thin skin things that we consume mm -hmm. are like mm -hmm. my plants all organic mm -hmm. whether it's Swiss chard spinach scale kale mm -hmm. sprouts dandelion mm -hmm. greens mm -hmm. um, I get all greens organic 
Okay. Um, so, uh, and because there's, there's going to be, uh, we like to say that food is, or eating is a necessary evil and mm-hmm. that there's always going to be a risk level mm-hmm. with anything that mm-hmm. even things that you've grown yourself, right, you know, right, there's right. can, there can be a risk level associated mm-hmm. with it for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that, that's my kind of rule for organic. Mm-hmm. Now the cautions about sugar, mm-hmm. <laughs> I could talk two days about sugar. Um, refined sugar is one of the most high levels of toxins that you can put in your body because sugar is a narcotic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I say refined sugar, I'm referring to processed sugar, like white sugar, like cane sugar, raw sugar, brown sugar, Mm -hmm. turbinado sugar, coconut Mm -hmm. sugar, date Mm -hmm. sugar. It's all Mm -hmm. a processed drug. And one of the most detrimental things that sugar does to us is actually what it does to our brain versus Mm -hmm. our body. Most of us try and avoid sugar because of our weight, Mm -hmm. right? We think, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't need this donut because of my waistline. Mm -hmm. You know, I shouldn't be eating this candy because I don't Mm want to gain weight. But really what you should be thinking when you're uh, consuming sugar is I don't want memory loss, Alzheimer's Mm -hmm. and dementia, extremely exacerbated by sugar. Um, You should really be thinking about the inflammation in your body. You Mm -hmm. should really be thinking about um, the arteries, your arteries being clogged, Mm -hmm. heart disease, sugar Mm -hmm. clogs your arteries. You should also be thinking about um, blood pressure when Mm -hmm. you consume sugar. You should also be thinking about inflammation in your body. You should really be thinking about your immune system because sugar shuts down your immune system three to four hours after consuming it. it, Right. And so there's so many things to think about outside of weight when it comes Mm -hmm. to refining sugar Mm -hmm. which is why you can't or shouldn't buy fruit snacks and cakes and cereals and say that's for the kids Mm -hmm. right that's for or that's for my husband who doesn't need to lose weight Mm -hmm. it's really a detriment to anybody Mm -hmm. I was talking to my therapist today about um, autism Mm -hmm. you know and I was talking about and she was saying you know somebody in her family buys her autistic daughter Mm -hmm you know, fruit snacks. And I'm like, mm. no, that right. has, number one, it has colorants in it. Yes. Blue number seven, yellow number 40. That's mm-hmm. hyperactivity in the brain. Yes. That's ADD, that's ADHD. Yes. And so we can't afford exactly. these, tox- these levels of toxicity. Exactly. So sugar truly is a narcotic. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, because it is a narcotic, there's no room mm-hmm. for moderation. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's something that we should be eliminating altogether, exactly. all refined sugar with exactly. absolutely, you know, exactly. no room for any of it. Well, I want to uh, piggyback and go back to the uh, cleaner organic foods. Yeah. Um, I'm a woman of God, so I minister the word of God yes. um, internationally and nationally. And what I've been telling um, people around the world is to completely line up to the Garden of Eden. And if God didn't spray any chemicals on the food, we should not be eating any chemicals um, on the food because our body is not created to house poison. Yes, that's right. And so uh, with that being said, uh, through the last maybe 25 years, mm-hmm. I've seen so many people reverse sickness and disease when they begin to eat foods the way God created it. Yeah. Now, for me, for myself, once I started to eat completely organic and line up to the word of God, if I eat anything that says it's organic, but it really isn't, mm-hmm. and it's some chemicals are on it, mm-hmm my body will break out in hives. Mm -hmm. My body tells me that Mm -hmm. somebody's lying somewhere. Yes. And I've had to confront business owners in the past and say, hey, this is not organic. That's right. You're labeling it organic, but my body is telling me something's in there. Mm. So once I want to tell the viewers, once you clean your body out, and you eat foods that are really clean, yep. Yep. you get clean inside. And when you ingest the poison, your body will respond or react to it. Absolutely. And I think what I was going to say is what you just said is that you have to have that heightened level of self-awareness with your body in the yes. first place. Yes. Because um, a lot of times I teach my students about one of the ways you can begin to overcome your sugar addiction is by being able to identify exactly how it shows up for you. Oh, that's good. But some of us, the addiction is so fierce Mm -hmm. um, that, and we've built up such a tolerance that we can't Mm -hmm. even identify what happens when we consume this toxin, right? But Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get inflammation in my Mm -hmm. back right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to experience some memory loss. Mm -hmm. I know it's like, but if you don't know how it shows up for you, you know, so I I love what you said. It's Mm -hmm. so important to be able to say my body is clean enough Mm -hmm. to reject a toxin. Some of our bodies aren't clean enough to reject a toxin. You're right. You're right. And I just wanted to encourage people um go all the way in step into it all the way yes and uh, give your body an opportunity to function the way that god um actually uh created it 100 percent. wow so 
my goodness, you've talked about so much, and we got so much in. I know. In almost 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> almost 30 minutes. Have you noticed anything with your hair? Does your hair grow faster? Oh, what yeah. do you notice? Oh, yeah. Well, physically, yeah. So I'm, I'm all natural, my hair, mm -hmm. and I don't... But, put anything on my hair or my skin that I can't consume by mouth. Okay. And so, yeah, my hair grows beautifully. Mm -hmm. My nails grow beautifully. Um, and it's, it's, it's been amazing. Okay. Yes. Well, you know what, Miss Lisa Smith, we're, girl, we're going to have to have you come back and Please. talk about some more, Please. some more information. That was yes. great what Thank you gave the Thank viewers. Thank you. Can I tell them where to find me? You can. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So, um, for my coaching, for speaking, for my programs and my free lectures, you can go to www.lisaangelsmith.com. All Lisa right, say Angels. one more time. www.lisaangelsmith.com and I'm Lisa Angel Smith on Facebook and Instagram. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa Smith, for Thank coming you. to the Lois Bank Show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And uh, viewing audience, I just want to encourage everyone to live long, live strong, make um, healthier choices, get in contact with Miss Lisa Smith. Um, you don't have to walk around this earth suffering mm -hmm. uh, with ailments and sickness and disease. All of that's a lie. Um, make those choices and watch your body restore itself. Um, this is the Lois Bank Show coming to you. Have a blessed Thanksgiving and a blessed uh, Christmas. Come back again.